great to be back. I'm going to kick off uh, this session. I'm Kenji. I'm a consultant in the luxury drinks industry. And as I said, it's fantastic to be here to be able to make some drinks. I'm doing a, a series of videos demonstrating how to make great looking and great tasting cocktails at home, all brought to you by my good friends uh, at Moon. I'm going to be focusing on Central and South America, really bringing those tropical vibes back. So we're going to be going to Mexico and Peru and Chile uh, and Brazil, back to Brazil. So from Mexico, obviously we all associate Mexico with tequila. So I'm going to be looking at the tequila sunrise and how to make a, a luxury version uh, of the tequila sunrise. Uh, going to be making a pisco sour. Uh, so Peru and Chile. Uh, where they make Pisco, obviously bringing back those elements. I'll tell you a little story uh, about my experiences over in Peru. And then we're going to go back, as I mentioned, to Brazil, where we're going to be making a batida, a uh, Brazilian uh, cocktail. Actually, it's probably the second famous cocktail after the Caipirinha, uh, but hasn't traveled as far uh, outside of Brazil as the Caipirinha and the Caipiriosca. So it's a, it's a creamy, shaken uh, or blended cocktail. So I'm going to be making actually a version of each. Uh, so three countries, four drinks, let's get started. So as I mentioned, uh, the first country we're going to go to is Mexico, uh, where we're going to visit uh, a tequila uh, sunrise. Now, the tequila sunrise wasn't actually invented in Mexico, it was invented in the, in the US in the 1970s in California. Uh, Mick Jagger uh, famously went on tour uh, about the drink uh, and the Eagles. Obviously, Frank Rank sang their famous song in the height of the Tequila Sunrise um, era, as it were. But whether you have memories of Mexico and tequila with shots or margaritas, um, sometimes tequila gets a, a bad rap. So I'm going to make a luxury uh, Tequila Sunrise just by focusing on each different element of the drink. And that's an easy thing that we can do at home. So first of all, the glassware. Uh, when making a drink, your glassware has a huge impact uh, on the look uh, and the feel and obviously the taste by the amount of liquid and the balance and the ice that can go into the drink. So make sure for a tequila sunrise, you get a nice big glass, something small. Uh, I'm using uh, this wonderful glass from Libby uh, that I like has the, the right volume for this style of drink. Next step will be ice. Now ice is so important, I mentioned almost every week and I will continuously mention it because ice to a bartender is like heat to a chef. It's really understanding how the, the temperature and the dilution uh, really works with drinks. So uh, I just bought my ice online and I just wanted to show you there's actually lots of different types of ice out there. Um, you can get ice which is just little shards like this. Now the smaller the ice, obviously the faster it's going to melt. So it's going to perhaps give over dilution uh, and you can get too much, but great for crushed ice drinks. You can get your normal size uh, ice cubes, uh, which are great. Not a huge fan of ones with holes because that increases the surface area, increases the dilution. Um, or you can get nice really big ice, what I call Spanish uh, style ice, these giant blocks. See, the bigger they are, the slower they melt, the colder they make the drink. Um, or it's very cheap and easy to get hold of ice molds to make nice big ice blocks uh, at home. Or uh, I often use uh, yogurt pots to make nice big ice blocks. So lots of ice in your drink. So I've got my big glass, I'm going to fill it up. With lots of great quality ice. No such thing as too much ice in my books. All right. So it was a nice big tall glass, lots of big ice cubes uh, next to the tequila. Now, whatever type of tequila or brand of tequila that you like, always make sure you get 100% uh, agave to really get the flavors uh, of the agave, which is unique, uh, or the blue agave to tequila. Uh, so there's three types of tequila. You get the Blanco, um, the Reposado, and the Añejo. Got two different brands here, um, but this is what I, I had lying around. See, it's all about the aging and how much uh, time they've spent in cask and how much the flavor they get from the wood, obviously balancing out the flavors of the agave. Uh, so Blanco or Silver, it's up to zero to two months rested uh, in wood, so they don't get too much of the color of the wood or flavor. Uh, the Reposado, between two and 12 months rested to get more of the flavor of the wood balancing out. And then Añejo, anything aged above a year. It's not like um, whiskey. Uh, where you can get much older uh, tequilas because the hotter the country, 
the faster the conversation the liquid has with the wood. So the more the flavors that they get uh, from there. So maximum five years uh, from there. So we're gonna do about one part uh, of tequila to three parts of the orange juice plus the grenadine. As I mentioned before, uh, if you've got a jigger uh, or an egg cup, it's just as good uh, to pour it in. So I'm using an Añejo, an aged tequila. This to work a lot with reserve, so Don Julio is one of my favorites. Pouring that over the ice, chill it all down. And then the orange juice. I think fresh orange juice is so tasty. Why would we go for a bottled orange juice if we're at home? If you've got some oranges or add it to your next shopping basket, get a nice juicy orange. Give it a little roll, get some of those juices moving around and just squeeze it fresh. I mean, I do miss those hotel days, going down and getting those fresh orange machines. I really like bits in my orange. Sorry for those smooth orange lovers. I really want all the, the texture. I squeeze about one and a half oranges, should be more than plenty. Then I'm gonna prep my garnish whilst I'm there. Lovely, freshly squeezed orange juice. Nice. And then, obviously to make it the sunrise, I'm gonna add grenadine. So I'm using uh, Monin's grenadine syrup. Uh, I always believe that uh, grenadine came from pomegranate. But I've just been recent, I've been to the guys at Monin, and they were telling me, uh, looking back at the history, it was made with different berries and vanilla. Uh, so in there, grenadine syrup, you've got fresh raspberries and blueberries and elderberry uh, and vanilla uh, from Madagascar. Uh, random fact of the day is that uh, Madagascan uh, vanilla, uh, pound for pound, is uh, more valuable than silver. So I'm just going to drop that at the top. Obviously, it's a bit of a suns, uh, sunset when you pour it in. Then as it sinks down, you can see the red will collect at the bottom to create your sun rise. See, when you go to drink it, we get to give it a stir to get all the flavors uh, coming through. You mix it up uh, with your bar spoon, uh, but then we can, if you want to take a picture on uh, Instagram, your uh, uh, drink beforehand, get the tequila sunrise. Now, if you do want straws, I mentioned last time, don't use plastic straws, there's wooden straws, there's bamboo straws. Uh, I use metal straws, they all come with cleaners these days, uh, so you can reuse uh, your straw in there. Mm. Lovely, rich tequila, you get the smoothness of the Añejo. It's nice and cold, but not too over diluted. I love the fresh sweetness. Uh, of the orange and get the smells of it too uh, and the touch of the sweetnesses uh, and the berry and the chocolateness uh, of the grenadine. So it's my first drink, the tequila sunrise. I said focusing on Central and South America so that was Mexico, I'm gonna go over to Peru and Chile for the Pisco Sour. Um, I personally have uh, never been to Chile, but I had an amazing experience uh, at, in Peru. Uh, so I associate Pisco and Pisco Sours uh, with Peru, although I'm using a, a Chilean Pisco uh, this time round. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go over and do the uh, Machu Picchu uh, walk, I can highly recommend it. Fly uh, into Lima and then you just fly up uh, to Cusco. The plane goes up and then just lands. There's no down, you just high up. You're gonna spend a few days in Cusco uh, to get um, readjusted to the oxygen uh, levels and prepare yourself for the four day walk. Don't get the train. Uh, you really need to understand how far Machu Picchu is up in the mountains uh, to appreciate how the Incas built uh, the city uh, running from the conquistadors uh, on the top of this hill. So the four day walk, uh, and obviously during that time, if you get a chance to experience uh, a Pisco Sour, and that's where it's kind of stuck to me. So what I love about cocktails, it really has this adventure and the experience uh, over there. So I'm gonna make uh, a Pisco uh, Sour. 
So it's a, a variant on the whiskey sour. So uh, how you make it uh, differs in the same way that a, a whiskey sour does. You can make it in a, a large glass with a big block of ice or you can serve it without any ice um, in there. One of the biggest differences I think is the fluffiness of a Pisco sour. Uh, the egg in a drink, the traditional egg in a, a sour, like a whiskey sour, uh, it's always been a divisive uh, argument. Obviously, traditionally, people use egg if you get the viscousness. Some people don't like the texture of it. But um, nowadays, there's a lot more uh, alternatives you can use. If you're vegan, you can go with aquafaba. Uh, chickpea water has the same uh, foaming uh, styles. Uh, or Mrs. Uh, Miss Betters Bitters is also a foaming agent you can add uh, into your drink. If you want to use uh, egg, so you just want the egg white. Well, that's about perfect actually, because I want about half, just over half uh, an egg white. Now, well, this is uh, a shaken drink, so I'm going to use a, a Boston shaker, but we talked about different um, styles of shaker before. Uh, if you don't have a shaker at home, you can use a, a protein shaker or a thermos flask. Um, but I'm going to shake it without ice first of all. It's called a dry shake. Uh, just the proteins, the emulsifiers uh, and the egg work best without that, the temperature drop with the ice. So I'm going to add, uh, first of all, two parts of my Pisco. Pisco is a, is a brandy technically made from grapes, um, but to, to, to different standards. Uh, different methods, should I say, in there. I'm going to use lemon juice to balance it out. Once again, I like doing everything fresh. I'm going to squeeze that lemon, pour it in. So we've got our pisco. Good juice. And the syrup I'm going to use. This is where ammonium really comes uh, into play because there's so many different syrups and flavors to choose from. Uh, I'm gonna go with a classic uh, sugarcane uh, syrup. It's a, a little bit different than regular gum or, or syrup because uh, sugar, uh, most sugar comes from beet, uh, which is a type of uh, root, um, whilst uh, cane sugar uh, is actually a type of uh, grass and you get a lot of the, the tropical flavors um, coming through. I mean, if you wanted to do a twist on something like a sour, whether it's a pisco or a whiskey sour, you can just switch out, easy thing to do, just switch out your syrup. So for example, I thought maybe you could use a, a white chocolate uh, pisco sour, it would be very nice, get those uh, chocolate flavors coming through. Uh, so I'm just gonna use the pure sugarcane syrup. So about two parts, one part, one part, make it nice, simple balance. As I said, I'm gonna shake this without ice, first of all, it would also be good I added the egg white, which is why I'm shaking it in the first place. Good. If you have a two part shaker, which wise to start in the smaller part, the bigger part goes over the top. And give it a good shake in there. Can't really show you. You can see lovely foaming agents. Uh, coming through. I'm then going to add the ice. If you don't have an ice scoop, uh, I found that like a spaghetti um, thing with holes so you don't get any water. So as I said, you can serve it over ice uh, or you can serve it straight up which will get more of the visual effects. I'm using a, a julep strainer. You see how light and frothy. The drink is, and then the traditional garnish is actually three dashes of bitters. The most common bitters you will know is the Angostura bitters, but you can get chuncho bitters as well, made specifically for Pisco sours. So the traditional garnish is three drops on the top. So that's the adventures of Peru. Drink number two. And my last drink, well, I'm gonna make twice in two different styles, because now we're leaving Peru and we're gonna go over to Brazil.
go back to Brazil as it were. Last time we made a caipinha and caipiosca, this time I'm going to make the batida. Uh, when I was over in Brazil um, quite a few years ago with my good friend Marcio Silva, uh, I did notice uh, these batidas, so I was, I was saying, what is, what is the difference? Why in some stalls I see it one way and some the other? He says it's very flexible and depending where you are, whether you're in a bar or whether you're in a market or on a street, batida in, in Portuguese means shaken or it can mean milkshake. So everything needs to be shaken or blended uh, together. So there's two different ways to make the batida. You can either shake it or you can blend it. So I'm going to make one of each. Um, and then I was like, well, why sometimes is it creamier, sometimes lighter? He told me you can make it in two different ways, once again. So you can use coconut milk, like that. This is coconut milk uh, or condensed cream. Obviously you get a different texture. So um, I'm gonna make it in two different ways. So the first one, I'm gonna use, thing. first one I'm gonna make blended. Second one, I'll make in the shaker. use the smaller cubes of ice in my blender. Lots of ice, it's going to be a bit like a, a smoothie. Now I'm going to use two parts of the cachaça. Uh, I'm going to use uh, one part condensed milk. Now the wonderful thing about the batida is it always comes in lots of great uh, seasonal flavors. Um, the most common fruit flavors that they use is passion fruit uh, and mango. Uh, and I also did try a, um, a pineapple one, which was very tasty indeed. So this one I'm going to use a traditional flavor of the passion fruit. I'm going to use Mosin, uh, Monin's passion fruit. They use purple passion fruits actually uh, from Brazil. It's about a 50 50 uh, fruit uh, and sugar base, so you get the right texture and mouthfeel, get the right sweetness to come through. So I've got one part of the Monin passion fruit puree. Uh, I've added um, the cachaça, I've added the coconut, uh, <laughs> condensed milk, uh, and then fresh lime. This time I'm going to use what we call a Mexican elbow, bartender tool, Just flip it in the wrong way around, if that makes sense. Squeeze that fresh lime in, in there. So, cachaça, condensed milk, passion fruit puree, fresh lime. Now normally I would strain out a drink like this, uh, but this time I'm going to chuck everything in the ice and all. See that rich creaminess coming through. So that's my first batida. Mm. All good. You get the flavors of the cachaça, uh, the passion fruit really comes through, but you get the creaminess. If you like sweets, obviously the condensed milk, uh, very creamy, very tasty. So the second batida I'm going to shake. So this is more likely you'll find in a bar than on a stall or a street market or in a little town in Brazil. The batida is just one of those uh, drinks that you can find when you're out and about. The Jolie Vie, this is just amazing uh, over there. So, fill that up. Two parts of my cachaça again. One part my coconut milk. Now, instead of lime, instead of the sweetness, I'm going to use Paragon. Uh, Paragon is a, a luxury cordial. It comes in white penja, timor, and rhubarb. I um, started working with these guys in January and I love the complexity and the sweet and the sour balance uh, that you get from them. So White Penja, the flagship, each of these is individual berries. Uh, 
from Cameroon, Timor berry from Nepal, uh, and a rhubarb from Ethiopia. But I love the, the sweetness and the passion fruit uh, flavors that you get. So I'm replacing uh, the lime and the sugars for that sweet and sour balance with Paragon rhubarb. Give that a good shake. Big ice cube. You see the color difference in this one here. So that's my second batida using uh, coconut milk instead of condensed milk. Two different ways of making it in Brazil uh, using the paragon as well. Mm. Quite amusing. That one was is the passion fruit. I believe I forgot to add <laughs> uh, the mango uh, in there as well. So I had a, uh, a plain one. I was using the, the passion fruit uh, in there, but I did get the paragon flavors. You can do it plain too. But I love the zestiness of the paragon. Still get the lovely cachaça coming through. So that's uh, coming to a, a wrap up of this week's sessions. We visited Mexico using the Tequila Sunrise, using the Grenadine. We visited Peru uh, with the Pisco Sour. I love that it holds. Mm. Not a huge fan of Pisco by itself, but in a sour reminisces, uh, takes me back to those, um, those days walking up, uh, up to Machu Picchu. And then all the time I spent in Brazil, got to love a batida, two different batidas. So that was a tour around South America. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, exploring those drinks with me and hopefully you can make some of these uh, drinks at home. Try to keep the recipes as simple and short um, number of ingredients, but bringing those tropical vibes over to you. Stay safe, stay well, I'll see you soon. Thanks. <laughs>